Is there a convolution theorem of the discrete Fourier transform? What is the circular convolution and how does it differ from the linear convolution? Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com and today we are going to talk about the circular convolution. In one of the previous videos we talked about the convolution property of the Fourier, Laplace and Z transforms. Does there exist a similar property of the discrete Fourier transform? It turns out that there is. A multiplication of two discrete Fourier transforms of discrete signals is equivalent to their circular convolution in the time domain. What is the circular convolution? Let's look at an example. Here we have a signal X which is four samples long and signal H which is two samples long because it's a discrete time impulse delayed by one sample. Their linear convolution looks as follows but their circular convolution is this which is equivalent to a circular shift of the signal vector x. We obtain the circular convolution by calculating the discrete Fourier transforms of the signals, multiplying them and then calculating the inverse discrete Fourier transform of the result. Why did this happen? Well, the DFT assumes that the signals it receives are periodic. You may think that you feed in a four element vector x but the DFT sees this. The same goes for H. The result of the linear convolution of X and H is of length 4 plus 2 minus 1, which is 5. But in our operation of calculating the DFTs multiplying and then the inverse DFT, we squashed these five elements into four element vector effectively obtaining aliasing, but not in the frequency domain, but in the time domain. The result is a superposition of the linear convolutions of X and H shifted by the multiplicity of four samples. This result is called a periodic convolution because the underlying signals are periodic because of the usage of the discrete Fourier transform. A subset of the periodic convolution, which has the same length as the discrete Fourier transform length, is called exactly the circular convolution. So the circular convolution is, we could say, a trimmed version of the periodic convolution. The circular convolution has the following formula. It looks almost the same as the linear convolution with the exception that the second operand involves a modular operation. It effectively makes the second operand infinite. It is repeated every n samples. And this repetition stems from the periodicity that we just discussed. So remember, the multiplication of the discrete Fourier transforms is equivalent to the circular convolution in the time domain. How can we use circular convolution to our advantage? It turns out that a subset of the samples of the circular convolution corresponds to a subset of samples of the linear convolution. For example, in the circular convolution of our signals X and H, the last three samples are valid samples of the linear convolution. The number of samples of the circular convolution that are valid samples of the linear convolution depends on the length of the discrete Fourier transform. If we put our input signals with sufficiently many zeros, so at least as the length of the linear convolution between them, then the output of the circular convolution is exactly the linear convolution. If the length of the discrete Fourier transform is one less than the expected linear convolution output, this one excessive sample wraps around the buffer and is added 
to the beginning of the linear convolution and thus it needs to be discarded. And the more and more samples of the linear convolution exceed the length of the discrete Fourier transform, the more samples we need to discard from the output. In the general case, if we have signals of length m and n and pad them with zeros to the length k and then perform the circular convolution, we need to discard the first m plus n minus 1 minus k samples. The remaining 2k minus m minus n plus 1 samples are valid samples of the linear convolution or zeros. A big advantage of the circular convolution over the linear convolution is that we can compute it efficiently using the fast convolution algorithms. And that will be the topic of the next video. To summarize, in this video we looked at circular convolution. Circular convolution results from the periodicity of the discrete Fourier transform. Circular convolution wraps the samples of the linear convolution that did not fit into the transform's length over to the beginning of the buffer. If we want to extract valid samples of the linear convolutions, this wrapped around samples need to be discarded. Circular convolution can be efficiently computed using fast convolution algorithms. If you want to learn more about circular convolution, I highly encourage you to check out the related article over at dwolfsound.com, which I have linked to in the description below. Other than that, I highly encourage you to subscribe, hit the thumbs up and turn on notifications in order not to miss out on the upcoming videos on convolution. Thanks for watching and take care.